Welcome to the library area inside of HereFish. Here you can build email templates. You can also configure and bring in uh, relevant articles from websites or blogs. And also you can configure a feature called Smart Tokens. So we're gonna start uh, with, with the content sources tab. And we'll get back to the email templates here in a little bit. So the content sources tab, you're able to add uh, anything that you can get an RSS feed for. So whether that's your blog or another blog or a site on the internet, you can bring that in. We also have some uh, pre-collected sites in our HereFish collection. So you can check out and add these if you like, or you can do your own feed with that option. And we'll show you in the email builder uh, where you can access uh, those articles that are pulling in but it would be a, a great and convenient way to get uh, relevant content information out to your candidates and client contacts. The third tab here is the Smart Token tab. We have a, a help article that, that breaks this down um, kind of in detail and goes over a, a lot of the use cases associated with it. So this will kind of glance over and kind of what it does. So with Smart Tokens, you're able to configure uh, different tokens depending on the type of entity that you, that you want. And then you can create two different kinds of tokens. You can have a, a user token that you create or a, a generic token. And the idea being um, you can create dynamic tokens or variables depending upon list criteria. Um, so in the user token, you can have a, a, a different user dynamically populate depending upon list criteria that you build. That can be useful because that can be utilized in the send from aspect for an email or survey or text message or the send to aspect for the internal notifications. And then the generic token, um, that's you can populate any value differently depending upon list criteria. There's a lot of, a lot of great uses that can get done with, with this, especially for those that have kind of complicated business pro practices. I need to get that kind of nuance uh, delivered in their automations. But just you know, a few examples that we have here are probably the most common where you'd want to have um, a, a different branch manager populate depending upon um, the location of a candidate. So that can be done. Um, you want a different branch name to populate inside of a message depending upon the location of a candidate. And also you could have different Google review links uh, depending upon location or other list criteria. So check out that help article if you do want to find out more details about smart tokens, but the library area is where you get those configured and set up. Email templates. This is the traditional kind of use of the library area. This is where you can build out your rich text and plain text email templates that can then be utilized inside of your automations so you can quickly build out the email content that you want to deliver. So you can add an email template in that top right corner. You can build from scratch. The drag and drop builder is our rich text email builder. The plain text is the plain text version. And we also have herefish templates, as you can see, that you can start from and utilize. For our kind of demonstration purposes here, we're just gonna utilize the rich text email builder and, and do that from scratch. So this is the email builder inside of HereFish. This is where you could name, name the template that you're building. So in this drag and drop builder, this kind of the left hand portion of the screen, this is the, the body of the email. This is where the content that you're gonna bring in goes. And then this right hand area, this is where you insert which content you'd like to include inside of the email. It's called a drag and drop builder because you're going to grab whatever uh, content module that you like, drop it in to the email wherever you like. You see that blue drag it here line, that's where this will go. You'll notice that if that doesn't appear and you're just kind of dragging things around, um, you, you won't be able to get it exactly where you want to. So you just want to make sure you're kind of aware of where that drag it here line is and that's where your content is going to go. As you can see, you have eight different choices for content uh, blocks that you'd like to insert. 
Uh, most are pretty self-explanatory, but you can do a lot of powerful things kind of combining them together, uh, which is exciting. And one thing to highlight too, is you can insert straight HTML code. So for those of you um, that have emails already configured in another system, if you have the ability to export that out as HTML, you can actually have that entire email copy over, render correctly, just with that HTML content block. So as you can see, each of these uh, kind of once they're in the body of the email, they become um, kind of you know, your content blocks so that you can edit and, and create and customize to your content. And then when you're hovering over each of these, you'll notice kind of a four directional arrow that when you grab and hold, you'll be able to move the content block up and down appropriately. So you can reconfigure things if you'd like to. And you'll notice as you click in different content modules, the right hand side, like the content block properties changes and so you can customize. So, you know, for example, if we're in the image content block, this is your option here. If we're on the button, we'll see what the options are here. So the content properties oftentimes has to do with kind of alignment, padding, spacing, uh, coloring, those kind of, those kind of uh, things. Another interesting feature that is available with all the content blocks is you can actually create two different emails that will render differently depending upon the device of the individual receiving it. So for example, if, if I select the hide on desktop portion for this button, if this is viewed on a mobile, this, um, this block uh, wouldn't appear, but if it's on a desktop, it would be hidden. So if it's on a mobile, it would, it would be there, but if on a desktop, it wasn't. So you can create two separate uh, kind of emails and how they're going to uh, appear depending upon your settings that get configured here. The other nice portion is, um, if you'll notice, you have kind of a, a back and, and forth button. Uh, you can kind of an undo or redo, and then you can also make uh, changes uh, and kind of revert back to a previous um, state that the email is in, which is particularly helpful if you make a mistake or um, you know, if there's something that you did accidentally, you can go back and undo that quickly so you don't lose kind of all of your work. I'm going to insert a text block just to show you kind of, um, kind of what are some of the, the options here. So if we go into the text block, um, you'll notice you have kind of your font, your sizing, kind of your normal alignment um, configuration abilities. And this is what would appear if you were inside of a plain text email template, email builder, it would just be one giant text block. So you can still put links in, things of that nature, but you lose out on the other content modules. It's just text only. Um, and then the other interesting part with the text block, just kind of a highlight, a couple things. Uh, the special links, this is how you can insert those uh, dynamic job variables that populate from the settings area inside of Herefish. So that's how you can put those in. And then merge tags, uh, this is how you can put uh, dynamic variables from the database directly into the message to personalize it um, and, and make it more appropriate for the individual receiving it. We have a lot of merge tags available. So there's, as you can see, as you scroll down, we have things about the individual. So candidate or client contact. We have placement, submission. We have information about the user that uh, is associated to that candidate or contact. Um, we have information also about jobs associated in as well. So you can, you can pull in lots of things to customize this and make it personal to the recipient that's receiving it. And those merge tags, let's use um, a candidate one here as an example. We'll just do candidate first name. You'll see that they, they're always going to appear this way, kind of percent signs, book ending. Um, the, the field name, and those can be utilized and leveraged in subject lines and additional areas inside, um, anywhere inside of here fish. So if we go back to the content block section here, um, you know, so kind of each of these, you know, can be useful and, and used for, for different purposes. And so you can combine those together to create the email exactly the way you're, you want it to. So it showed kind of how you can move these content blocks vertically up and down. The rows area is how you can insert multiple content blocks horizontally. So again, it's kind of that drop and drag mechanism. You just drag it over inside of the email. 
and you would go back to your content area and then drag the appropriate uh, blocks you're interested in bringing in. So that's how you can have kind of content blocks horizontally and get that configured. You can do, as you see, as you scroll down here, you can do up to four content blocks side by side. And this is also where the content sources come into play. This empty drop down here. This is where those uh, articles from the RS feed, RSS feed would get housed. So you have the ability to keyword search and you can uh, restore up to 200 of these articles in here and that refresh as soon as new articles get published. So they're sorted chronologically. So you can keyword search, find what you'd want to insert content wise. And again, it's just a drag and drop option, but it's convenient, efficient, instead of having to worry about resizing, reformatting, copying and pasting, those types of things, you just literally just drag it over and get it inside of the email. So that covers kind of how you would be building out your email and kind of your configuration. As with many things, the more you're in here and kind of playing around with it, you'll gain some familiarity and, and get kind of comfortable with it. And then as you have some features, I just wanna highlight here, so after the email is built, you can do a preview of what the email is going to look like in a desktop version, but then you can also look to see on a mobile version what it's going to look like, so that can be helpful. If you want to take that to the next level, you can send yourself a test. So you can, you can put your name in or your email address in in the top box here. And then the second panel, if you leave it blank, we will pick somebody randomly from the database to insert to test out your merge tags. Or you can put someone in specifically if you want to see how those merge tags are going to populate. Now you'll notice we have a merge tag preview. So for each of the merge tags that is utilized inside of your message, you'll get a preview of what the value is going to be. So that can also be a quick way just to double check to make sure that the merge tag is formatted correctly, it's rendering and it's bringing in information that you're expecting. And then the settings area here, just where you can rename the settings and kind of can go from there. So that closes out the, the library era, area. This is how you would be utilizing and building out your email templates.